Well, that's an interesting color to find skin tones. Let's see how good it does at selecting them. Wow, that has a pretty darn good skin selection. Wow, okay, turn this off, add a curve. Dang, that is pretty darn good. If you've ever had difficulty selecting skin tones in Photoshop, you're probably gonna wonder how I got to this point. If you're anything like me, you've questioned how Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom are so darn good at selecting skin tones with the new masking tools, but Photoshop pales in comparison. Well, I'm gonna do a deep dive on some skin tone selections here based on a video tutorial that I did recently. I wasn't very happy with the skin selections that I received even after doing that, so I started to dive a little more and you get to benefit from it. Okay, so let's talk about this. I've got two different images here. I've got a family here with differing skin tones, which is perfect for this because it will really help guide us on uh, selecting skin tones, knowing that we can do this with multiple different skin variations. And then we have this image here, which is a very tricky image for skin tone selection in Photoshop. And the reason why is because we have to look at colors that are in close proximity to skin tones. And that would be things like the red in this couch, the red leather here, and also the dress here, the drapery around the dress, and even underneath the dress, this looks like varying skin tones, not to mention even the orange that's happening in the background, okay? And this image, a little bit easier because of the lightness of the background versus their skin tones, but we'll see if Photoshop can do this or if we need to do this another way. So I'm gonna go over the four ways that I'm gonna make skin tone selections. Yes, there are four ways we can make skin tone selections in Photoshop and talk about why each one is good or is not good depending on the circumstance that you're under and show you one of my techniques that's in there that is brand new that I think you're really going to enjoy for accurate skin tone selection. So if we're gonna make a selection for skin tones, obviously we could use various different selection tools and then use masking to do it, uh, but that's tedious and pretty time consuming. What I want in Photoshop is the immediate response that I get in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom for selecting human subjects. I want that in Photoshop. Let's see if we can achieve it. The first method I'm gonna do here is gonna be select and then color range. And in color range, we actually have something here that says skin tones. Now, there's not a whole lot that we have to control the skin tones here. We have one button here that says detect faces. And when we do that, we get kind of this wiry look here and we can move our fuzziness here, but it doesn't really look that great because as we move this further this way, we do still kind of get more of this almost layered topographical map look. But beyond that, we're also getting some areas in the image that look like skin tones, like her dress and even some of the area that we targeted back here and the chair. Now, if I turn detect faces off, it doesn't necessarily help me much. I'm still stuck with this fuzziness slider that doesn't seem to be selecting a whole lot of this individual. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and detect faces and then just press okay. And here I'm gonna put a curves adjustment layer on here and we'll double click this and we'll call this CR and then skin tones, okay? If we alt or option and click on there, that mask shows us exactly what we're gonna be selecting. And as I modify this, you'll notice that not only are we affecting the skin tones here, but anything that is closely related to the skin tones because of its mask. Of course, we could go in, alt or option on here, and B for our brush tool, and brush away with the color black and any areas that we don't want on here. Let me get a faster brush. But that, again, is tedious and time consuming and doesn't help us much. OK, so let's look at another option that we have here. The second option that I have for this is actually also in select color range. So we're going to go to select. We're going to go to color range. And here, instead of skin tones, we're going to go up to sampled colors. Now, when we have this set to sampled colors. If I click on this color on her face, I can also select any localized color clusters or colors that are closely related to that color that was selected. That does a pretty good job of getting our skin tones pretty well, actually. It's a very natural looking mask, especially with the fuzziness up as high as we have it. But if we pull this all the way up to get her skin in there, you'll also notice that we get everything in the image. If we turn localized colors off, it's a little bit better, but we get a more natural approach with the localized color clusters turned on. And what that localized color clusters mean is that on the color wheel, wherever that peach skin tone looks, it's going to select colors that are similar to it. Now, with that area on her face that I probably grabbed, it could very well have been more white. So this can be kind of inaccurate. So I'm gonna drop the fuzziness. 
So I can make multiple sampled colors here. I can bring the fuzziness as far down as I want to. And to get this more accurate, if I press and hold the shift key, I can click on other areas in her face that are also skin tones here and see if I can get a better selection. Now, it's very difficult, like I said, because now I'm just getting multiple other selections in there that I don't necessarily want for other colors. In the past, this was something that I would just say, okay, I guess I'm stuck with this, and I would select it, and then, again, use some type of masking tool to get rid of that. Okay, so we'll turn localized color clusters off for now and see if this is going to give us a better result. Again, I have to finagle with this back and forth, back and forth, in order to get just the skin tone selected. So I'll press OK, and I'm going to make a new curves adjustment layer for this. And I'm going to call this CR for color range, and we'll call this sampled. Okay. Now, there is also another method that I could use inside of Photoshop without going into Adobe Camera or Lightroom, and that is the wonderful object selection tool that we now have here in Photoshop. And with the object selection tool, if you hover over something, yes, you can select the entire object or the entire person here. But you see this mode here? Under this mode, it might be set to rectangle. Let's change this mode to lasso. And when I set it to lasso, instead of just drawing a box around the things that I want, I can actually draw a very specific lasso around the areas in the image that I want. So I want this area right here. I'm just going to draw kind of loosely around her and see what the object selection tool is going to do. Okay, I'm just going to draw this around. It doesn't have to be perfect, but get it as close as you possibly can too. And then once it does its thing, it's uh, selected some of her hair, even though I told it not to select the hair. So if I just want skin tones, I'm going to press Alt or Option, and that will subtract this object here. And this object is going to be her hair. And that should do it. Okay, looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and make a curves adjustment layer. And we will call this OBJ SEL for object selection. Helps if I double click it. Okay. So of these three methods, which one do we have that is going to make a better selection for skin tones? Well, it looks like right off the bat, it's just going to be the object selection tool. It may not be the most accurate because if we look at this, it's kind of like the hammer approach. There's nothing clean in here. There's nothing feathered for this skin tone like there is in this one, minus the topographical map that we now have on her, or this one where we have this weird pixelated shading. With the most recent advancements in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, we can use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter to make a selection for this individual. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and press Command or Control J on the background layer here to make a duplicate copy of this background. And then I'm going to go to Filter and go to Camera Raw Filter. Once we are in Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, in order to edit just the individual here, we need to go over to the masking section. And once we do that, you're going to see that this thing where it says people is doing its thing. It's thinking. It's like, okay, I detect that there might be people in here. Let's see what this individual is. So if we click on this individual here, we click on this person here. Uh, let's go ahead and make selections for individual skin areas on this person. It's going to go ahead and do a breakdown here of all the places that we can make a skin tone selection for. We can do that for the facial skin. We can do that for the body skin. Maybe for the eyebrows and possibly for the lips. Uh, here we can't see much of the other stuff, but I probably don't want that anyway. And then after I've made that selection, we can see that we have all of these in one mask. Now I have the option of made, making four separate masks, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and press create. And once I press create, we can see from within this mask that we have a good selection for this person. And at this point, I can adjust and modify this person right here in Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. I can get that skin tone exactly how I want it using these sliders that are here. And that might be great and fine and well. But what if we want that type of selection for this individual inside of Photoshop? We can't just export this mask out. Or can we? We can, but it requires a roundabout method. So the method that I'm going to use for this is I'm actually going to turn her into a magenta smurf. I apologize to the author and the creator of this stock image and the next one, but this is a phenomenal way to make a skin tone selection. I think you'll agree with me here. So what I need to do is basically make what I'm calling the 100 sandwich. <laughs> I don't know what, are the, what else to call it, or maybe the magenta smurf technique. But if you say the 100 sandwich, it makes it actually pretty easy for you to uh, go back and do this again, because what we're going to be working on here is in the color section. 
What I want to do here is I want to increase the temperature to plus 100, decrease the tint to negative 100, decrease the hue to negative 100, and then increase the saturation to plus 100. Okay, so now you know why it's called the 100 sandwich, right? Because we have plus 100, that's the bread, the, the top piece of bread. This is the bottom piece of bread at plus 100. And then the meat in the middle is negative 100. Or whatever, we can call her the magenta smurf. But I think if you go with the 100 sandwich technique, you won't forget it. So now that we have this selection, you might think, Blake, why on earth are you making this poor girl magenta? Well, if we jump into Photoshop, you'll see why. So let's take this poor girl and open her up into Photoshop and see how I'm going to make a selection for her. Okay, so I showed you the other selection techniques before and how they weren't quite the best. And now we have this one here. I made her on her own background layer on purpose so I wouldn't lose any data here. This is a sacrificial layer that I'll end up deleting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Select. I'm going to go to color range and this time I'm going to use sampled colors, but I'm going to click right there on her forehead. Now you'll see because we separated out her skin tone from the skin tone colors that are in her dress by making her magenta, it won't select anything else but that magenta. So as we increase this fuzziness, look at how good that mask is. Oh my gosh. If we push this too far, it's going to start selecting other things that are that magenta color. You might say to yourself, well, Blake, can we just go down here and select magentas? You possibly could, but it's going to give you kind of this faded mask. It's not going to give you that, that high uh, uh, ratio between light and dark in that mask. So it might not work as quickly as you want. I would recommend doing the sampled color technique. Now, if you want more of her skin tone in there, you can press the shift key and select more of that skin. But note, if you do, you're going to have to drop the fuzziness here because as you increase the amount of colors that you're selecting from here with that fuzziness high, you are increasing how many points are being selected and you will have to decrease the fuzziness here. OK, so that looks about good, even though I made multiple selections for it. That's OK. I'll drop it so that I don't get anything from the background in there and I'll press OK. All right, so now we have a selection here. Let's go ahead and make a curves adjustment layer, and then we can delete that background copy and look at the difference here. If I press Alt or Option and click on the mask, let's go through these masks. This is the color range after doing the Adobe Camera Raw hack. Okay, here is the color range with the sampled colors. Here is the color range with the skin tones. Here is the object selection. This is like a hammer, unfortunately, but look at how beautiful and how natural this skin tone selection is. So when we come in here and we modify this, now we are only modifying her skin tones here and separating them out from everything else in the image. It does require a little bit more work, but it's not that much more work. I'm gonna show you now again how to do that, but I'm not gonna do all the other things first. So I'm going to pop over to this image here. I'm going to duplicate it. So duplicate this background layer by pressing command or control J. Now I'm going to go to filter and then go to camera raw filter in the camera raw filter. All I need to do here, I don't want to do anything in this. I'm, again, I'm not in Adobe camera raw, the program in Adobe camera raw, the filter, which would happen during my workflow. This is not something I would do at the camera raw level. This is something I would do when I'm in Photoshop working on my image and I want to select out those skin tones because this would still get color range selected because these colors are so close to the skin tone colors on their face. So let me go over to the masking section here. It's going to find multiple people now, not just one person, but all three of the individuals in this image are going to get found. So I'm going to select person number one and then I'm going to add person number two and person number three here. And what do I want from all three of these people? Well, I want their facial skin. I want their body skin if it's showing. That would probably be their necks, okay? Uh, I'll take their eyebrows. Uh, and then I'm probably going to want their facial hair because right now this guy's going to be missing a portion of his face that's going to need to be edited. So we'll go with facial hair as well. And we'll also go lips. And this just kind of looks funny. I, I feel really bad for these individuals. They, they're a very handsome couple, beautiful couple. But, okay, so now we're going to create that mask. And we don't need to do anything else in here, okay? Nothing else in here. What I need to do is the 100 sandwich. We're going to go plus 100. We're going to go minus 100. We're going to go minus 100 and plus 100. All right, now that we've got them selected, we'll open that up in Photoshop. Now, once this is open in Photoshop, again, this becomes a sacrificial layer. We don't need this after we make the selection for it. So we'll let Photoshop do its magic. It's thinking about it. Cool, thank you. Now we'll go to select and we'll go to color range. And again, we will select based off of the sampled colors here. And depending on how many samples I want to make, 
or how natural I want this to be. I think that's a pretty darn natural mask. So I'll just go with one with a very high fuzziness. And we can get away with that because we're only selecting things that are the color magenta, which is phenomenal. We'll press OK. And again, we'll make a curves adjustment layer on here. And then we'll delete this. You don't always have to make a curves adjustment layer on here. You can make any adjustment layer. Let's say you want to modify it with a gradient or with selective color or with whatever that might be. You can use whatever you'd like. I'm using a curve because that's typically how I'll modify my tonal values first. And I can also modify colors there using the R, G, and B channels if I need to. But the beauty of this is now I also have this as a mask. So let's say I do a little bit of editing here. I make this a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. Okay, I change this to luminosity so it doesn't change the color of their face. Okay, not bad. And let's say I go into selective color. I want to add this mask to here. All I have to do is click on this mask, press Alt or Option, and move this up while I'm holding Alt or Option, and then let go on that mask. It'll say, do you want to replace this layer mask? Yes. I also have the option to never show that again. I always do because in training, uh, I have to tell you that. But if I were you, I'd probably just turn that off. And now we have that on selective color layer so that we could modify maybe their skin tones a little bit further by adding a little bit more life to them and making them a little bit more vibrant in the color uh, there rather than being kind of washed out and dull. Okay, so just options. How, where would I, would I take it this far? Maybe not. Maybe I dropped that opacity. I will also say that there is something magical that happens in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom with the mask selection. So while it does look like a bad mask while you're in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, when you mess with those sliders, it seems like there's some type of governor in there that is keeping it from going outside the bounds of those masks and making it really natural. What I found here is that by doing this technique, we do get a natural approach to that mask by shifting the tonal values that we see in that mask with the fuzziness slider. So experiment with it. It's a very interesting technique. But if you noticed at the beginning of this video, when I was talking about the object selection tool, I said that there is a better way that we can make the object selection tool work and kind of make it similar to what we just did in Adobe Camera Raw. And you might be thinking, why are you showing us this now? Like you just said that this technique is really good. And that's true. But here's what's happened sometimes. I was editing this video at three o'clock in the afternoon. I leave at four o'clock in the afternoon. As I'm doing the dishes, this, I don't know why this happens this way. I don't know why I'm telling you the story. Anyway, I'm doing dishes and I'm like, oh, there could be a better way with the object selection tool. So I ran downstairs, I tested it out, was like, oh crap. Now I gotta record this into the video. So here you go. How do we make the object selection tool, which has this kind of mask that we said was more of the hammer approach. How do we make this look similar to this? Well. There's many ways to do the same thing inside of Photoshop. The way that I'm gonna do it that's the easiest way is actually to use my favorite thing, Blend If, okay? So how are we gonna use Blend If for this to make it have this kind of natural skin progression that almost appears as if the mask for the skin is going from the highlights to and transitioning through the midtones into those shadows and tapering off as it gets to the shadows? Well, that's an easy, easy Blend If thing. I'll show you how to do that using my Blend If panel and Blend If alone. So first off, I'm going to use the Blend If panel because it's so easy. All we have to do to make this selection appear better, this is the hammer approach. It's just a big blanket swatch selection for her whole face with no tonal variation. If we want this to have tonal variation in it, we need to remove something from that. So if I take the shadow sliders here and blend if and move it all the way into the highlights, essentially what we're doing is we're tapering off those shadows as they transition all the way into the midtones and through and into the highlights. Now the mask itself will have no change, but if we press the overlay button here, which allows us to see not just the mask, but also the blend if settings, you will see that when we turn the overlay on, we have a nice smooth transition, which will make this object selection just as effective as the Adobe Camera Raw hack. Which one's easier, selecting the object or going into Camera Raw and making the selection? That one's pretty much up to you. How will we do this in Blend If without the Blend If panel? Well, I'll go ahead and reset my tones here and go ahead and hop on into Blend If by double clicking on this layer. And then all we need to do here is go to the underlying layer section here and then just split this over, feather it with Alt or Option and move that over. And that's essentially the exact same thing as using the Blend If panel to do that. The Blend If panel just makes things a little bit easier because it's right here and we don't have to go into our Blend If settings. To do that, we can turn the overlay off. So whether you are comfortable with Blend If or not, I have an entire course on that that can teach you that. You'll find that in the description below. 
If you're not comfortable with Blend Diff, feel free to use that Adobe Camera Raw technique. And what's great about that Adobe Camera Raw technique is you can actually use that for any type of Adobe Camera Raw mask that you want to bring into Photoshop to use it. So you can use that technique for multiple things. And in all honesty, this was supposed to be all about this awesome Adobe Camera Raw feature. But now you basically have a little mini masterclass in how to select uh, skin tones and why one selection might be better than another. Sure, some are faster. Others are more accurate. It just depends on what you need for the image you're working with. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today.